Today I'm going to start building a narrow cabinet. And the cabinet's really designed to store all of my court paint containers. It's really in an effort to try to get this shop organized. And the cabinet's going to go right over in that corner. Now the first thing I want to do is cut the sides of the cabinet. And the sides are really thin. They're only four and three quarters of an inch. So what I've done is I've measured out nine and a half and then I've set my fence here to cut this piece a little bit heavier than nine and a half and then from there I'll rip this into my four and three quarter inch sides. Now that the piece is smaller and lighter, it'll be easier to control when I push it through the saw and that will give me a cleaner cut. Well, I finished ripping the sides on the table saw, and then I cross-cut the sides to length on the chop saw over here, and then I went back to the table saw and cut a rabbit in the sides to accept the back. The next step is to start marking out for the shelves. I'm going to have seven permanent shelves, including the bottom, and then at the top of the cabinet, I'll make those adjustable shelves. So what I want to do now is mark out, and I've already I've used a scrap piece of wood to mark out where I want my shelf, and I'll lay that on the sides here, mark it out, and then square across. And now I can remove the guide and I'll square across the other side and mark that out as well. I'll use a scrap piece of 3 8 shoe molding to help me mark out where I'll need to pre-drill. And then I'll put a center mark 3 quarters of an inch from the rabbit and 3 quarters of an inch from the front of the cabinet. And I'll do that right down the way. Friday morning and the last time I was in the shop was on Wednesday and so I'm going to try to get this cabinet finished and I'll probably put it on the wall and then take it down and finish it over the weekend. So a lot to do today. Now um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this guide because I thought I kind of glazed over that and uh, if you're going to build this you probably want to know a little bit more information. So let's take a closer look at that and then we can start putting this cabinet together. So I decided that I wanted the cabinet to be 83 inches high. So the first thing I did was take a scrap piece of wood and cut it to 83 inches. And then I measured a paint can which is 5 inches tall and then I cut a piece of scrap wood at 5 and 3 quarters and laid out where I want the shelves. So I'll bring the camera over and show you exactly how that was done. I decided that I wanted the first shelf to be at an inch and 3 quarters so I could have a inch and 3 quarter rail at the bottom of the cabinet. And then from there I used that scrap piece of wood that I cut at five and three quarters and I traced a line. And I find it helpful sometimes to put a little squiggly mark there just to remind me that that's where the plywood's gonna go. And then I use the stock that I'm using, the stock plywood, three quarter inch plywood, traced another line. And again, I used that scrap piece of wood to mark out for my next shelf. And I did this all the way up the line for the bottom of the cabinet. Earlier this morning, I came in and cut my shelves and I countersunk all of the holes that I had pre-drilled earlier. And now I'm assembling the cabinet. And I'm not using any glue, I'm just using two inch and five inch screws. And to help hold the shelves in place, I'm tacking the shelves first with inch and a quarter nails in the nail gun.
You can tell my nail gun is starting to act up. Well, now that I've got the cabinet put together, I'm going to drill holes in the top part of the cabinet for adjustable shelves. Okay, well now I've got all of my holes drilled for the adjustable shelves, and the next thing I'm going to do is put a, a brace on the top shelf, and it's going to go on the top of the top shelf because that will make the shelf shallower, and I won't be able to put a, a quart size paint can in here, so I'll prob probably use this shelf here for spray cans and things that are a little bit more narrow. And this piece of molding here that I'm using as a brace, uh, it's the cutoff from Artsen. It's a leftover piece from when I made the top of the blanket chest. The main reason why I even need to use a brace on the back of the cabinet here or on this top shelf is because the back is going to be made up of two pieces of plywood. And I'm doing that just because I don't have a long enough piece of plywood for one sheet or for one piece in the back. And I didn't want to split. I didn't want the seam of the plywood to be just on a three quarter inch piece of uh, plywood on this one shelf. So this beefs it up a little bit and gives me a little bit more of a purchase when I go to attach the back with a couple of screws. I attached the back to the cabinet with just a few screws because I'm going to want to take the back off when I go to finish the cabinet, but I need to have the back on so I can attach it to the wall because I need to scribe the face frame on the left side of the cabinet around that electrical panel. I also wanted to point out that I cut a half inch rabbit for the back of the cabinet even though I'm using 3 8 plywood and I did that because I wanted this eighth inch reveal. There's a few imperfections in the wall and this will help the cabinet sit tighter against the wall. It also means that I won't need to countersink the holes for the screws that attach the back to the cabinet. Well, I caught a little bit of a break here. It turns out that the cabinet, I don't need to screw it to the wall because it's resting on the baseboard molding and it's, it's there good enough for me to start working on the face frame. I want to try to get a nice tight seam where the cabinet meets the wall. So I'm going to have to scribe the face frame in. So what I've done is I've measured from the inside of the cabinet to one inch and I've put a mark on the middle of the cabinet, this shelf here in the middle, one on one of the lower shelves and also up at the top of the cabinet. And so what I'm going to do is hold the face frame at those marks and then transfer the line from the wall onto the face frame.
Now if I was on a job site, I would cut along the scribe line with a jigsaw, but since I'm in the shop, I'll use the bandsaw. Now I want to trace a line where the face frame is and make sure that when I attach the face frame to the cabinet, I put it along this line. If I were to make a mistake and put it on this line, I would end up with a quarter inch gap going all the way up the cabinet. Now I can start attaching the face frame to the cabinet and I'm going to start with the piece that I just scribed. Now I'm ready to attach the right side of the face frame and I'll keep it flush with the side. I've already ripped all of the rails, so now all I need to do is cross cut them and nail them to the shelves. For the most part, the cabinet's finished. I have to sand it and I have to fill the holes with some wooden plugs. Uh, but I'm going to do that after I make the doors, give it a final fitting, and then the whole cabinet gets sanded and I start the whole clear coating process. Uh, so now I just need to figure out the doors and I'm going to have a half inch reveal on the inside of the face frame on each side and a quarter inch reveal at the top here and also on the top and the bottom. Well, it doesn't look like I'll finish the cabinet today. Uh, I've just about ran out of the edge banding for the upper doors, and it's actually getting pretty late anyway. Um, I think that what I'll end up doing is I'll just do a quick tour of the cabinet sometime next week, and if there's any questions, I'll answer those. And then that way I, I can show you what the cabinet looks like installed in the shop. I'll make a couple of adjustable shelves and uh, see how much storage this actually gives me. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.